Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Jimmy Henning. He's with the University of Kentucky Forage Extension Specialist there. Good morning, Dr. Henning. Good morning. When we talk about clovers and legumes and adding those to our forages, we usually focus on white clover, LaDonna clover, but where does red clover fit into the picture? Well, you know, red clover is a, a short-lived perennial. If you could change it, you'd like it to last forever, which white clover tends to do for us. But, but red clover is a tall growing erect legume that, that yields a whole lot better than white clover. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, it's actually even got some superpowers that alfalfa doesn't have. Uh, for example, the, the uh, stems uh, are much more digestible with red clover than alfalfa. And so when we're talking about high nitrogen prices, you know, I think people are looking more toward adding legumes. Would this be a good choice? Oh, it would be. And in fact, it's, it's my favorite. I, I love it uh, for all the reasons that we might name. I mean, the, but nitrogen fixation is one of them. And we, you know, at a dollar a pound or, or some, somewhere in that vicinity, uh, getting free nitrogen from legumes is just huge. And red clover, uh, can we grow it. We can grow it very well in Kentucky and it's going to produce a lot of nitrogen. It's going to add to the quality of the pasture. It's going to give us a little more summer growth uh, and help us with the endophyte as well. One of the uh, the discoveries that's come out of the USDA lab up here in Lexington that's embedded in our forage group has been that, that red clover in particular has a compound in it called, we'll call them isoflavones. Uh, and important thing is that it, it has a couple of very big effects on an animal. Number one, it, 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 it mimics the effect of, of bovitec and rumensin. We call them ionophores uh, in the rumen, such that there's more protein that passes whole complete out of the rumen. That's really, really good for ruminants. Uh, and the other one is, is, is really earth shattering. And that is that it is a vasodilator, which means it is it directly counteracts the effect of toxic tall fescue on ruminants, which is a game changer. Absolutely. Because although we might want to switch all of our forages to an endophyte free or low endophyte fescue, it's not practical for every producer. No, it's not. And the cost is, is, is significant. It's, it's something to be considered, but, but you've got land that doesn't need to be taken out of perennial grass. So with red clover, we kind of have, you know, I, I like, I like to think of them as superpowers. You got, you've got free nitrogen on the one hand, you've got uh, a forage that animals like on the other, it yields well. And then you throw into the mix that it, it dilates the veins so that the fescue is not as toxic. And so why do you think it's not more widely used in the state of Kentucky? Number one, I think people use cheap varieties and cheap varieties really with red clover fall out of bed. I mean, they just don't last. They don't yield. And the other thing is, I think we thought we, we frost seeded. We were very casual about how we establish it. Maybe we haven't, you know, checked the fertility. Maybe we haven't really worked on making sure it gets good seed soil contact, you know, and, and so we're. You know, we maybe I've even said that we halfway don't expect to get a stand. I think if you planted corn, you'd get, expect to get a stand. So I, I think the fact that, that we maybe be, uh, kind of become a little too casual about establishment, that, that we have been, we, we've had failures and we don't like that. And so we just move on. So your recommendation, we do have variety trials. And so you can look at the varieties, get a certified variety. Would you recommend that? We would, you know, then the problem, as you know, it is that a lot of times proprietary stuff out of companies, they don't blue tag it anymore. But if the, where that really comes into play is Kinland and certified Kinland, honest to goodness, blue tag Kinland is still a world beater for us. Not perfect, but it does well. Uh, otherwise, just talk to your supplier, say, I want one of your better red clovers. They'll know what that means. And do we have resources available to learn more about red clover? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we have a good YouTube channel. If you Google uh, KY Forages YouTube, you'll come up with that. We've got a great website. Uh, and, you know, we have variety trials actually from uh, into the 20th century, even uh, a lot of red clover performance and others as well. All right. Well, thanks for the information, Jimmy. If you have questions, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.